So I'll wait till you could see me just keep it low, my dear sir. I'm gonna go over lines 50 through 80. I, I did this earlier today, but uh, I forgot my microphone wasn't on, so I'm redoing it. I'm gonna be going by pretty quickly, okay? So if you need to slow down, stop, pause it when you need to. If you need to speed up and you just wanna see me kind of put up my notes and stuff as I'm writing along, do that too. Whatever it is that is helpful for you, please, please do that. Um, it's going to be a long video. It's going to be uh, close to about maybe 40 minutes because this is um, about double the amount that we've we've done before and, uh, all in one go. So here we go. Uh, we're going to start with our first sentence. Uh, now, fall right here with when it. I see this period here. I'm kind of looking out for these uh, or at least big breaks in the Latin to kind of help me. And I know when it is a verb that needs to come. So we're going to have to find out who or what is coming someplace. And then I see Talia flammato se cum dea corde voluntas. Um, as I'm reading this line, I see the word dea, and we've seen dea a lot now because of the goddess Juno. Um, and then we see voluntas, which is an ns. This is a nominative singular PAP, present active participle, which means to roll a rolling over. And this nominative subject here is the goddess. So she's rolling over um, this accusative direct object, such things. Talia in our book, I think, is a nice note. I'm following the book as I'm reading, and it's used substantively, guys. It says such things. Um, flamato corde, this is an ablative of place where, where this is happening. So rolling over in her uh, Flamato Corey. Flamato is a PPP, but it is not in an ablative of absolute. This is in an ablative of place where, where this is happening, in her inflamed heart. Um, say cum we saw before, uh, could mean cum say with herself, but here it means to herself. This is a nice little um, chiastic arrangement where we got uh, this going here. Flamato and Corde, and then Secum and Dea right in the middle. So you see kind of what she's rolling over and where it's happening. It's deep in her heart, uh, all this stuff. So she's kind of rolling over these things. She's kind of stressed about it. Uh, she comes in patrium me more of Iolium. Uh, Iolium, I see the AM. I know this is accusative, and I think there's a note in our book, too, about this, um, that both nouns are in opposition with patrium. Iolium is the place of uh, Iolia. So into the country Iolia here. In plus accusative equals into. So into uh, this country, accusative here, in. And genitive plural nimborum, nimbus, is where we get the word cloud, a nimborum uh, of the clouds, this country of the clouds. Loca is another noun. This is um, uh, and it, something called an apposition. Same with Iolium. This is a noun that describes another noun. A place filled with what? This ablative of means. Or ablative, I'm sorry. I think the book doesn't have ablative of means. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't say exactly uh, what it is. Uh, yeah, this is just an ablative um, with the forentibus austries, with the raging. Uh, Austris is the word um, for uh, the south wind, I believe, and uh, for renty bus is describing. But we'll just use it as the winds. In this next part, um, we get this next sentence starts with heek and ends at frenat. But I see the word que a lot, and I see premit, which looks like a verb, so I'll just put a little mv here. And I see frenat, which looks like a verb to me. It has t's at the end, makes sense. Um, and then I see rex. Rex is a nominative. I know that. We've seen that a lot, especially second, uh, uh, in Latin 2, in Latin 3, we saw rex a lot, and Iolus is the name of that king. This is King Iolus. Here, not this. Here, in wasto antro, this ablative, a place where, uh, ablative, ablative, wasto antro, um, this is this out of place where that describes in this vast cave. Mutantes ventos, tempestates que sonoras. This is what's in there. But what does King Iolus actually do? He premit. He um, 
Prem is where we get the word oppress or press, premo, but really means control. He controls lutantes when this is PAP uh, for this accusative direct object here. He controls them, these winds, these mutantes wentos, which is, I look in the book, wrestling, struggling winds, and tempestates sonoras. Um, this is an adjective that describes this next accusative direct object. Tempestates, the storms, these uh, tempests, uh, these loud tempests, because they are so loud when you're out of storm. How does he do it? This allative of means, imperio, with power. Ak means and. This is a big and because it's breaking up the clause. Imagine if there's a comma right after prena. And frena, winklis et carpe. These are ablatives of means in an ablative of place where. Kind of combined. I'll put PW. But frena means, and it's in the book too, you can always check, it means to. Uh, to restrain or to check. So he checks these same things, the winds and the tempest, with chains and he places them in a prison. That's how he's able to restrain. I'm going to pause this recording and I'll be right back. Okay, we're going to start now with line 55. Uh, this ends in this clause I see ends here with a nice uh, little semicolon. See a couple more periods for later on. But Illy indignantes. We saw illy earlier. Uh, or not earlier, but we saw ile, which is that guy. Illy here is a nominative plural. This is our subject. It means that, those. And I'm guessing this refers to the winds, because that was the only thing that was plural before. It's the winds, those winds. I think the book also mentions, uh, actually, no, it doesn't mention this. Indignantes is another PAP. That is a nominative plural. It's describing they, those uh, indignantes chafing or being angry. Cum magno murmure. Magno goes with murmure here, these ablatives, because uh, Virgil loves to write in the style of putting the adjective before the, the noun is describing in the prepositional phrase with the preposition, or he'll do that with the noun before the preposition. I'll put the noun here, adjective. But no, those go together. Montes. I know this word is genitive. And the reason I know, because it's mons, montes. So the is in the third declension is always genitive. So I'm going to see of a mountain somewhere. Kirkum claustra. Kirkum takes accusatives. So that's going to be this claustra. Fremont. This is our verb here. So they, being angry, uh, murmur or they roar. Two totally different words. Um, I would say they roar with a great murmur. They don't murmur with a great murmur. But they roar with a great murmur, kirkum, around the claustra. Claustra, if you check, are the barriers or the bars of the mountain. Those bars being um, uh, the actual prison. Here you can see some M's. Magno, montes. Nice alliteration there. Really helps bring it together, the mmm of the winds. Kelsa said it, Aeolus arche, sceptra tenent, moleque animos et tempera iras. I see Aeolus again, I see his name. So I know that's our nominative subject. Said it is our verb, he sits. Kelsa arche. This Kelsa is a long. I think our book also has it as long, so. If you're following along, if you're following along, excuse me, you'll see that Kelsa is the word for lofty or high. So it is high out of a place where um, citadel or, or tower, I guess, in this high place, uh, he sits. Ten ends. This PAP is nominated. And then we got this accusative direct object of our PAP, skip drop. So he's holding a set. So kind of like a king would do. Quay here, and he molet animos, main verb number two, and accuses a direct object number two. He loosens or he softens the minds. We saw molet in, in uh, Dinos and Icarus when Icarus was uh, playing with the, the wax and molet 
um, little flaw wub there uh, in the title sphincterus. And here's a nice and tempera iras. He um, tempers, he calms the iras, his direct object number three. Ni faciat. Ni introduces a negative conditional clause. Uh, we haven't talked much about conditionals because, well, honestly, it's not the end of the world to not know them. Uh, but just to know that it's if not. If he does not, faciat. So the subject here is Iolo still. If he does not, and this is do, does not. And that's talking about these things, these actions. Smollet animus, temperate. If he does not, Maria apteras caelumque profundum, quipe ferat rapidi secum verantque peralis. This is the next part of the conditional. If he does do this, then Maria is the word from mare. This is either accusative or nominative. Teras is accusative. I see the AS. So I can assume if these are connected by and, ac, that means this is probably accusative. Que, chylum profundum, and uh, the profound or deep sky. This is probably another accusative that is being connected all together. Quipe, truly, or indeed, ferrant rapidi, secum verantque peralis. Um, ferrant comes from the verb ferro, which is to bring or carry. Um, I'll assume it carries typically um, rapidi in our book. Uh, rapidi is described as the winds or the, in their madness. So the winds carry the seas and the lands and the profound or deep sky. Usually the sea isn't carrying the winds. It doesn't really work like that. The wind picks it up, right? That's what he's describing here in the verb. So I'll put an S V here and that's me here, and uh, this is our nominative. And they carry them with themselves. This is actually kumse, it's not to themselves. This is kumse. Que, whereont, per aros. And if you're checking the book, you can see whereon at the end, and they sweep through the auras, the airs. Um, auras, or the auras, I guess, they sweep. This is our second verb. The they rapi nt is how I know this is talking about the winds because Iolus is one guy, but the nt is plural. The only other plural thing, ili indignantes. I'll pause it there for a moment and come right back. Okay, then we get to this next big chunk here. Uh, this next five lines. Said introduces our next call with but pater omnipotens. Pater, nominative singular for father. Omnipotence and S, nominative singular. This is our nominative subject, the omnipotent father. In other words, this is Jove or Jupiter. Something about spelunkis abdidatris. Spelunkis is um, where we get the word spelunking or to spelunk, uh, which is for cave. Atris is an adjective that means dark, atra. Um, abdidit is our next verb. Abdidit here, you can check in the book. Um, um, did it is to uh, hide or put away. So this is our first main verb. You can add wentos. He hid the winds. Where did he hide them? It's this ablative of place where in the dark caves, these deep caves, right? Um, he's hiding them because metuins hook. Accusative, direct object, hook from he hike hook. Fearing this, this PAP, we saw Met Twins before, just with Juno. This is directly in contrast to this. Juno was fearing man. Jupiter fears nature, the God, uh, not the, just the gods, but the winds. So this is what he does. Fearing it, molem is an accusative, because I see EM. Montes, we know that's genitive from before. In super is an adverb, and oh, altos. Montis, though, with an is, uh, in our book, actually, it's an es. I'm sorry, my version here has the is. Um, this should be accusative. And altos. 
My bad. Sorry. He imposuit. This verb, our main verb, number two. And he placed upon them a mass or molem, a structure, and high mountains above. So he's going to put them in this cave and just put a mountain, plop it right on top. And did it regen and gave a king. And that king being Iolus. Qui refers to regen. Foidere looks like an infinitive, but I look in the book and foidere is from foides, which is an agreement. So this e is short. It's not long. And foidere kerto, uh, this is an ablative of means. Uh, with a certain agreement, kerto is certain uh, or fixed agreement. At premere, at laxa skira dare uses habits. Both and. At, at. Um, I think there's a note about that as well. Um, and, uh, let's. Oh, yes. Okay, so what's nice about the notes is it says skirit is our next verb here. It's in this relative clause of characteristic. Um, so this is nominative. And this is a, our relative clause verb. I'll call RCV. A relative clause characteristic is a subjunctive relative clause that describes somebody. Usus, I see here, is a PPP. I'm familiar with usus, and that's nominative singular. It's this who, having been ordered, how is he ordered with a certain treaty, knows or knew to premere, so premo, premit, to control, both to control and To give, laxas habanas, this accusative goes with dare, this infinitive here goes here. So he knows how to give uh, not only to control them, but also to give uh, loose reins. Habanas laxas. Laxas is where I get lax, laxadaisical. So it's accusative and accusative. Right? So basically, what we're finding out now is. Uh, he's pretty good at his job. He can control them when he needs to, and he can also let them loose when they need to also. Now we get to this part. I see Juno. Usually she's up to no good. Juno, ad quem tu, to whom then, and quem being the king, Iolus. This accusative goes with ad. Then suplex. This is another nominative. We saw suplex earlier with Juno. So this stuff is really contrasting from before. Suppliant. Juno as a suppliant. Usa est. Usa is a deponent verb, which means to use. And it only takes ablatives as objects. It does not take accusatives. Why? I don't know. But it does. He's wokibus is the ablative for this deponent. Wokibus, it's called metonymy, it's a part for the whole voice. It's talking about speaking. She um, used these words, basically. She used this speech to convince him. We're going to pause there. Now we're back to uh, Juno speaking again, and she starts with Iola. In our book, what's really nice is uh, they break up this next portion with a nice uh, parentheses here, so you know. This is her kind of breaking apart, speaking to Iolus in this vocative form of his. For you, tibi diwam pateraque hominum rex, and mulcre dedit flutus et hodare went. I see pater again, nominative, singular. I see rex, that's a nominative. Um, diwam, is it that you went? Well, if we see diwam, that means, well, guess what? This is going to be a genitive plural. Genitive. Laurel, father of the gods, Jove, and king of humans, king of man, Jove, oh, you know, is another genitive plural. Something tibby to you, and we'll create dedit. Oh, that's our main verb there. Dedit here, that means tibby, 
is a dative indirect object because you give something to somebody. I he gave to you, Iolus. Both mulcre fluctos and tolere went to. So this is another both and he gave or granted here as the book says, he granted to you to infinitive mulcre fluctos. Which is the waves. This is an accusative direct object. This is waves. This is a fourth declension word. It's just a waves. Um, if you're looking, fluctus uh, isn't in the book, but it's waves. And then if you're looking, uh, mulcre is uh, uh, to calm. So he calms the, uh, the waves, and he's also able to lift or raise the waves. How? By this ablative of means winter. So he's got complete control here. Okay, then from knowing that what Iolus, uh, how he has received this power from the gods, of being Jove, um, here's where Juno starts to ask him the nitty gritty. Gens in amica mihi terrena navigarai cor. Gens in amica, we saw gens before, this is like the people, the unfriendly people, this is our nominative. Gans and Amica, unfriendly to me. This is one of those datas of possession that come up. This could be data of possession or a data of reference, um, and being that it's a reference to her. Um, I believe in their book, uh, Mihi isn't really referenced much, but um, this is like, oh, the name is to me, the uh, unfriendly people to me. Uh, that's our data of possession. Terrenum now we got Icorn. Now we got as our verb here, sails. We saw now we go way, way a bit ago. Sails the sea. And where this genitive, the Tyrian Sea. Uh, the book tells us where it is. It's in the Mediterranean coast. Uh, coastline between Corsica and Sardinia and north of Sicily. So it's uh, pretty close to Italy. They're really, really close to Rome. Ilium in Italian, portans victos quae panat. This portans is almost like acting like our second verb. It's P A P, carrying ilium. This accusative object of the P A P is um, the word for Troy. It's also ilium. That's what they would call it, ilium. It's Troy. They would call it Troy ilium. They're the same. Victos quae penates and this P V P, the penates having been conquered. This accused direct object of um, the participle there. So you can kind of see how where it's going. Um, then we get incute we went to submersas que obrue pupes out age diversos et siki and corpora ponto. Our book has a nice friendly note in here about this uh, that incute are imperatives. Uh, obrue is an imperative, and age is an imperative, so all these are in little, in little imperatives, commands from her. She's getting pretty upset. This, which is right, has que, out, which is or, et, this is nice polysynthetic. Incute wim. Uh, incute is a word that means strike into, which takes a dative. It would be this. Dative. Oentis goes here. But whim is the direct object. Strike force or strength to the winds. And obrue, destroy, or uh, as this has it, overwhelm, crush, obsomersas pupes. This is a PPP. Pupes is the word where we get the word poop deck. Like, uh, this is a ship, uh, this is a direct object. And if they're already submerged, it's, it's just really ironic that she wants to crush them if they're already underwater, but she really wants this to be done. Or, age is where we, from ago, so drive them diversos, apart. Or, desicie, which is a scatter, disperse. This corpora, this direct object, the bodies. This is a plural with the A. A plural direct object. Uh, disperse the bodies. Where? This out of a place. Where? On the sea. 
Okay, so this next part is pretty tough, but uh, I'll help break it down for you. So the notes here are all right. Um, uh, mihi, it says here, is another date of a possession. It's got suns, like mihi nomen est. Uh, this is a date of a possession. It's, it's hers owning it to me. Oops. Uh, right. Date of possession. There are sunt to me, be septem. Be septem is twice seven. This is just a poetic way of saying saying fourteen. Fourteen nymphi. That's not good. Just like you might say me he nomes, my name is. Uh, the name to me is. This is the nymphs to me are fourteen. Restante corpore. This is an ablative of quality. It describes the quality of something with the word with or in uh, with or, or in with uh, surpassing beauty or with a surpassing body uh, these nymphs so they're pretty looking quorum is a genitive plural quorum um, which is uh, whose um, whose which Gaiopea pulcherima has the means the word est. Um, forma is a long a. This should be ablative. This is an ablative of quality. I think the book also has it as an ablative of respect um, with in form. She is most beautiful in form. This nominate is. Gaiopea is one of those nymphs. So she's the most beautiful in form. So she's the most pretty. So, yungam savili propriam dikabo. These are future tenses. Yungam, which we haven't seen before, and dikabo is a future tense. I will join how this ablative means in marriage, and it's stability. It's a stable marriage. And I will call propriam. Uh, this is uh, uh, propriam is like your own. Uh, I think the book has it here, appropria one's own, and I will call her your own, this direct object, your own. And I'll put it, stop a moment here for omnes, and then I'm going to scroll back up. Omnes is all. This is a nominative plural, and it's all the way at the end. Uh, and so this would be all of whom I will join. And she says, all of whom I will join in marriage, uh, who is the most beautiful in form. So she's saying, all of these I will join in marriage, the one who is the most beautiful in form. So he goes in a long way just to say, I'll give you the pretties. Um, what I'm going to do is I kind of broke it up a little bit. I'm sorry, it looks weird. But uh, I just uh, had to clean up a little bit of the board because it's looking awfully messy. So uh, do bear with me. Um, ut introduces a uh, clause that could be either result or purpose, and the best way to know is if there's a tom, tallest, tontus, any of those kind of words there. And uh, I didn't really see anything, but I did see pokerima, uh, which is most beautiful. That could introduce a result clause, but probably here this is going to be purpose. And just when in doubt, you can always think purpose. If this would work. And it's not. Okay. But that's a purpose clause. Tecum meritus pro talibus annos exigat. Exigat here, the subject is not Iolus. This subject here is actually going to be Diopea. Diopea is the subject here. I think the book may mention this. Um, uh, no. Yes, subjunctives. But it doesn't say that diopea is the subject. It's so that she, and that means uh, the fact that she wants to, uh, uh, she's going to make her marry him. Exigat, this nice uh, subjunctive verb um, in this purpose clause. Ooh, that's writing really well. Um, so that she, exigat, completes or passes years. Anos, this is an accusative direct object. 
Oops. Protolibus mat meritus for such merits is album. Goes with pro. Wow, this is writing so nicely. Take them. Kumte. With you. And fuck yeah, same one. Te parentem pulcra prole. Pulcra prole is ablative. The A is long. And prole has a short E, but that's a uh, for the word proles, which is offspring. It's almost like progenium, but this is do. She will make here, this next subjunctive verb. She makes te, direct object. Parenta makes you a parent, makes you a father. With what? A pulcra proli with a beautiful offspring. So she's so gonna make you a nice looking kid. Okay, now we're on to our last few lines here. Um Iolus, our subject. Haik contra. Contra is a preposition that takes the accusative. And that accuses is hike, which is a not, uh, which is a neuter plural. These things. So I always, in response to these things, we need the word dixit. What's the dixit? He said these things. Tuis o regina quid optes explorare labor. Mihi usa capesere passas. Does yours, O queen? Quid optes explorare as labor. Yours is the labor plus s. This is nominative labor. Uh, quid, this is like almost like a relative clause treated. Which optes you, so this is our uh, es, is also our main verb and subject. You uh, hope, or you. Uh, I think it had here optes uh, as desire or choose you desire to explore to search out for. This, oh, this is your labor, yeah. Fas est mihi usa capesere. Fas est is our main verb here, our second one. I'll put this as our RC, RB, yeah, relative verb. Uh, it is right. Fas est is like it is right by the gods, it is right, hep is like a Almost, it is right by the divine. For me, this is dative. I think uh, the book mentions this as a dative of reference. It's a reference to who it's for. Why, who is it right for? Dative to me. It's a, it is right to me. To capesere. This infinitive is to undertake or to perform. Usa, this accusative. Plural, direct object. The orders. So, uh, Infinitive with boss s. You, me, quod cumque hoc regni, tu sceptra you, yoan quae concilias, tu yasa, epulis acumbre diwam, mimorum quae facis tempestatum quae potentem. You, this is our subject, really big that he uses you so many times. Anaphora, one, two, three. Nice anaphora here. You, me, quocumque hoc regni, sceptra yoquai, conchilias, you, conchilias. This is our first name verb, name verb number one. You win over, for me, this is a dative indirect object. Because it's going to go with conchilias and das later on, our name verb number two. You give, or you win over, for me, Quocunque, whatever. This of a kingdom, Remy is genitive. And he's talking about the kingdom of the winds. You win over the sceptra. This we saw before. And you win over Yoan, Jove. Well, they use it a direct object. One, two, one, one, one. And you. Give epulus ecumbre diwan. You give or you grant to me to acumbre infinitive to recline. Epulus is a dative with a compound verb. Acumbre uh, comes from recumbo, uh, cumbo really, which is to lie. Um, and ac is just 
to recline. To recline at the banquet. Genitive D1. If you see D1, odds are it's going to be D1. That's a genitive goal. It's the banquets of the gods. So it's her. she's allowing him to be able to eat with the gods. So he gets to sit with everybody else up at Mount Olympus, which is nice. And Nimorum. Nimorum Falcus Tempestatum Que Potenta. And Falcus, you make me potentum. So this is our last verb here. And you make plus me potentum. It's accusative direct object number three. Or this verb three. Uh, you make me the power of the morum. Genitive plural. And tempestatum. This is a genitive plural. Tempestatum. This tempestatus is a third declension. So you make me the power of the, the clouds and the tempest of the storms. Which is really odd because he just said that Jupiter, or Juno said that Jupiter gave him that power to, to quell the seas and to calm the winds and to do all this, but he's saying, no, it's actually, you're the one who's doing this for me, Juno. So it looks like Juno has won him over. I hope this was helpful for you. Um, please, uh, whatever you go over, I think it's really helpful to follow along with the book if you haven't yet already, but I hope this was great. Take care, everybody. Wally.